bring forward and their leader, Pastor Jennings, and to all the ministering brethren that labor in worth and doctrine in the truth of God. Moreover, we thank him for the message of holiness. Thank him for all our ministers that are present and those who are not here. Amen. Thank God for blessing us all here to be here this morning. Truly, it's a privilege and an honor to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Is that right? Glory to God. And we don't take that lightly. Amen. We could be otherwise minded or laying up somewhere getting ready to be buried. Amen. We are about to have a live telecast this morning, but before we give hand over the service to our pastor, we welcome you to this is our local temple here in the Bronx. Amen. We've been here since 2015. This actually is our second anniversary, but it's not our second year in existence. We've been here since 2015. For those who know, don't know, we've been here every Sunday morning at 11 and at 4.30. Feel free to come out and worship the Lord with us. That means you don't have any excuse. Whether you live in any one of the surrounding boroughs, don't let the devil get in you to say it's too far. Is that right? You didn't say it's too far when you have to go to Great Adventures. You didn't say it's too far when you have to go to Empire Casino. Is that right? Nowhere you have to go if you got to go to work in New Jersey, you get there somehow by God's permission. When it comes to the work of God, the devil put in your mouth, it's too far. Amen. We are here every Sunday. Amen. Amen. Is that right, I said, church? Amen. Hallelujah to God in the highs. You see, when you get baptism right, you get the law of repentance and baptism right. Now we are under another law that says not forsaking yourself, the assembly of yourselves together. So you can't stay home and say you're going to watch the message on YouTube. Right. Am I right, I said? You have to be in the house of God. So don't make the excuse and say, well then, Pastor Jennings is not here. God's word is here. Yeah. Am I right, I said? Doesn't matter who is here, as long as it's not a woman. As long as the Holy Ghost is here, you come and hear God's word. Is that right? Yeah. Hallelujah to God in the high. So we're about to make a telecast. Amen. As we said before, this is the truth of God. Yeah. We welcome you to the first church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Once you hear this message, you're going to look at church different. You're going to start looking at yourself different. That go to church. Make you examine yourself. Is that right? So we want you to have an open mind, a receptive heart, be attentive, make sure your cell phone is off, and be prepared to what you hear from the messenger of God. And now before we go any further, I want to present unto you our leader, teacher, and guide, the messenger of the Almighty God, Pastor Gino Jennings. Thank you, brothers and sisters. You may be seated. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We bear witness again there is no God but one, there is no God with Him, there is no God besides Him, there is no God equal to Him or greater than Him. We thank him for being the true sender of holy prophets and of holy apostles. We thank him for the way of holiness revealed to his servants for our learning. We are blessed to have all of you that are here in Bronx, New York this afternoon. I'm grateful to God for our ministers, to all of our guests. I have to say that the scripture says it is good for us to be here. The Lord have been good to us. Uh, last week in Brooklyn, we had a wonderful service and uh, 45 were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ last week. And last night here in the Bronx, so far, 30 was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's one thing about this message. You know, someone who wants to go fishing, they love to go digging for worms. And that's what we do. We fish, and I love to use the word of God to bait those that are sincere and really want to be scripturally right. If you don't want to be right according to the scriptures, you don't need to waste your time to go to anybody's church. 
purpose of church supposed to be to get us right with God. Not to rob you, not to hustle you, not to entertain you. But the purpose of church is to teach you the ways of God. And once you learn God's ways, it'll put you on the right track. I'm glad to see so many of my new extended families, many of you I have never seen, but uh, been watching over YouTube and so many areas of internet and the various television stations we have throughout America. God is responsible for this program. We can never get this type of results on our own. I mean, never. We couldn't do this in a thousand years. To see so many men and women every place we go, whether in America or out, people are hungry. People are tired of getting fed rubbish and garbage and a bunch of sugar. Our natural body can't survive just with a bunch of sweets. You got to have some good collard greens and turnip greens and bok choy and good kale and what not and get it in your system to nurture the natural body well we have a gospel that nurture your soul <clears throat> and if you want to be right you in the right place to my new brothers and sisters that are visiting from boston we thank god for you uh, we thank god for all of you We greet all of our viewers around the world, you that are watching in the Netherlands, throughout Europe, and throughout Australia, Sweden, and uh, throughout the Asiatic world, throughout the wicked country of America, through Canada and South America, everywhere. The truth of God is the message that God put here. Many people credit me, but you're crediting the wrong person. I will not and could not be responsible for something as rough as this. <laughs> Brother, <clears throat> I wouldn't want to put something together like this. This stuff hurts you. It's good for you, but it hurts you. It's right for you. It's just what God have that will put us on the straight path. All right, so I want to greet all of our viewers in Connecticut. God willing, Connecticut, we're planning to be in your area. Not this year. I'm so booked up, people still calling me, asking me, could you get here? One man wrote me. <coughs> he said, well, look, I know you're busy, but when you go to such and such a place, why don't you just stop here on a weekday? Just stop on a weekday. Stop on a Wednesday and a Tuesday. He said, man, my wife will feed you well and just preach to us. And then you can go to your next stop. <laughs> People are hungry. Glory to God, we're living in the last days. But Connecticut, God willing, we're looking to stop over there in your area soon. Now to all of my viewers in California. God willing, in the month of December, we look to be in Sacramento, California. We have baptized, God willing, I believe, maybe over 100 souls there in the California area alone. I'm glad for our brother there, uh, Brother Vince, who's our uh, Hispanic-speaking minister there, Minister Santana. Very good brother. He's been working hard, too. I mean, working, brother. People that reach us throughout California, he had drive eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, 15 hours throughout the whole state if need be, baptizing everything that want to be baptized. So when we sent word that we'll be there in December, he started reaching all the members, Los Angeles, Sacramento, this part of California, that part of California. He said his phone didn't stop jumping until the next morning. People happy and rejoicing. People are starving. We're living in a time now where there's a shortage. And there is a shortage. There's, there's plenty of churches. But the churches are abandoned. It's like having a supermarket. Bought it up. And you're still fool enough to park on the parking lot 
wondering why they won't open. And you see the sign says, we have moved. And you still sit there wondering why they don't open. Well, that's the way it is with church. The devil moved in, God moved out. The devil moved in and it brought all type of trash, rubbish, garbage, foolishness, unrighteousness, ungodliness in church. And only them that are sincere and really want to be right, the mercy of God will reign upon you. And the God of heaven will deliver you out of the rubbish that you're in. And whether you're black or white or yellow, brown or red, God will put you on the right path. Now, as I have said moreover to all the people that follow the truth of God's message, yes, you must repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ to be right. But after you're baptized, if you're going to go back to the false religion and the false church you came out of, do you know you will still go to hell even with the right baptism? That's right. Somebody say, well, how's that? Pastor Jennings, there's a doctrine, there's a teaching that you must continue in. The Bible says in Acts 2.42, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. The doctrine of the apostles is the doctrine of God, which is the rules and regulations and principles and guidelines and statutes that God have set in the church to govern the church. That's right. So after you repent of your sins and you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, that puts you in the body. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but now you got to have rules. You got to have guidelines to govern your footstep right. when you come into the body of Christ. That's right. All right, to all of my viewers and all of my New York family, you prepare yourself now for our closing National Holy Convocation in the month of December. December 27th through December 31st. That's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Someone say, you having church on Monday? You go to work on Monday, don't you? <laughs> New Year's Eve is on a Monday this time. So you don't have to go to work on Tuesday. <laughs> Amen. So you got five days to hang out with the truth of God for five days. Isn't that wonderful? If you can't make all five days, well, you can make at least a weekend. Now our National Convention Committee Normally, they organize events every day. But this year, this convention, I told the committee there will not be no events. We're going to have five days of service, and all through the day, the church will be open for all day prayer. Wonderful. All day for five days. <clears throat> won't be no seminars won't be no lectures none of that five days the church will be open prayer will start in the morning all the way up to it's time for evening service that way everybody got a chance to be able to come in any time at their convenience Amen, because people will be getting off work different hours and they'll be able to come any hour at their convenience, crying out to God and pulling on heaven for the Holy Ghost and pulling on heaven for healing and deliverance and whatever you want from God. Five days. So <clears throat> to everyone that watched the truth of God and is part of the truth of God family, you don't want to miss the holy convocations. There's only three convocations in America a year. And don't just sit home and watch me on YouTube. You come along so you can, you can at least gather to Philadelphia three times in a year. <clears throat> you went to your fake church more than that. Some of you watching had the keys to your cemetery. 
and you open up the tomb to your church. That's right. Faithful at choir rehearsal, singing with homosexuals. Am I right, I said? That's right. Amen. So you come on now all around the world from California to Maine, from Maine to Texas, from Texas to South America, all across the South Pacific. I want everybody, everybody, you preachers, you come on to prepare yourself for the closing year service. December 21st through December, or rather December 27th through December the 31st. New Year's Eve is on a Monday. That's not an odd day for us. It's not an odd day because we believe in worshiping God anytime. That's right. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and Monday. Amen. Church, five days. Now, if I were to announce a five-day concert, everything would be there. Everything would be there shaking their hips. Even if their hips was fake, they'd shake them. Until they, until they just get dislocated. <laughs> Five days of pounding with the word of God. Amen. All of my viewers throughout the whole state of New York. I want to see all of you. Yeah. Don't just sit home and say, well, Pastor Janice, I'll wait till you come to me. That's of the devil. Amen. The Bible said, don't forsake to assemble yourself together as the man of some is. And let me say to all of you that are in New York, as the minister was talking, Minister Dave Harrison is the uh, minister of the Bronx, New York area. Stand up, Brother Harrison, again. He's the minister here. <laughs> Amen. He's the local minister here in the Bronx, New York area. Now, service goes on here at the Layman College every Sunday. This is our temporary location. Every Sunday. Every Sunday service go on here. And like he said... Don't say, well, I won't come until Pastor Jennings here. I'm sent to the world. Amen. I won't be back here if it be the Lord's will till next year. And if you sit around home waiting for me to come, you're disobedient. That's right. Because I'm not your God. Amen. If, if I, listen, if I was your God, I'd destroy you for not coming. <laughs> eh? but I'm not your God. Thank God when I leave. Listen, when I leave here. And arrive home tonight. I'll be home a few hours. And then Monday I'll be flying to Atlanta. Monday evening I'll be in Atlanta. Be in Atlanta Monday evening. Be in Atlanta to Tuesday afternoon. Then fly back to Philadelphia Tuesday afternoon. Time enough to be in church by Tuesday night. Amen. So I'm, I'm busy. I'm working. Harrisburg. We are be in Harrisburg starting the new temple of our Lord Jesus Christ there the first Sunday of September. Amen. So we'll be in Harrisburg the first Sunday. After Harrisburg, God willing, we'll be in Alabama. After Alabama, we'll be in Mississippi. After Mississippi, I'll be in Tallahassee. After Tallahassee, we have the convention going on in Africa. So I'm busy. You don't have time to sit around and wait on me. Amen. The reason why we work to set up locations so the hungry can be fed. So you that are here in New York, don't be so lazy and say, well, I, I can't come from Brooklyn here. You Listen, you're going to go from Brooklyn to hell. <laughs> All right, take God and believe me, hell is a longer distance than from there to Bronx. That's right. Hell, you got to fall <laughs> as long as God lives. That's right. Get out your lazy house. Glory to God and come on from Yonkers, from Brooklyn, from every other place until I get in your area and scrub your wicked churches down with the cleansiness of God everlasting word. That's right. You make your way here to Bronx, New York. Leave your church. Don't tell me what your position is. Pack up, get your hymn book and bring it with you. That's it. And come on here and hear the word of God. All right. All right. right. Let's dive into the book of pain. We're glad for all of you that are here. Boston, God willing, you give us some time. We'll try to get a telecast in your racist area. <laughs> Amen. Because I know Boston, Massachusetts, you're living around a bunch of sick church-going bigots. And some of them bigots claim they're Christian. And I want to say this to all of my bigots watching. You know more Christian than I'm from the Salvation Army. That's right. Amen. Because a man can't be a bigot and serve God too. Amen. You can't serve God and look at me as a nigger. 
Are you listening to the old man? That's right. And I can't serve God looking at you as a Christian cracker. That's right. It ain't listen. They look at me as a Christian graham cracker, you know. <laughs> and man, because you know I got some color to me, you know. <laughs> but listen, you bear in mind, whatever color you are, you cannot be a racist. Hey Amen. That message now, I was watching before I came downstairs, I was watching the message from the uh, convocation that Sunday. Hey Amen. So I was watching it, and then I went to Tony Harvin's website, and I'm glad for my brother being here. And, uh, and I was watching it, and all the comments, you know, people hate when I preach against racism. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong with people. Mm -hmm. Races hate when I preach against racism. And racism is, racism is not narrowed down to a black and white thing. You got white on white and black on black. That's right. Certainly you do. That's right. Oh, yeah. Racism is a white on white, a black on black, a yellow on yellow. It come in every category now. That's right. But glory to God, we are here with God everlasting word to shoot all of it. Amen. I mean all of it. That word was dropping last night, and I talked to a Hispanic family last night. And uh, they was just rejoicing. The father practically broke down in tears. He said, I've been out of church and stopped going to church and picked you up three years ago. He said, only the truth of God message by the grace of God kept us. We, we haven't been in church in three years. But this message right here, think of it, New York. You got a place that you can come to now. Someone said, well, Pastor Jennings, we already got a church. You got a building. Like this. This ain't nothing but a building. That's right. You got a church that robbed you since you've been born. That's right. And lied to you since you walked down the aisles of your church and sat there and turned your bench colors. Amen. You looked at your preacher with his hair slicked back and rings on every finger, looking like Reverend Ike. Am I right, I said? That's right. You've been in your church and got your prosperity plan. You helped the neighbor's hand next to you, and you didn't get nothing but germs. Amen. Aren't you sick and tired of playing church by now? Amen. This gospel that God gave us will challenge how sincere you are. That's right. Challenge whether you mean to be right or whether you're full of talk. That's right. It's going to challenge you that walk around and carry your Bible and give out tracts and telling people, do you love Jesus today? Just walk around smiling. Do you love Jesus? Did you know Jesus is coming back for you? Hell going to wipe that smile off your face, brother. Yes, it will. Amen. This thing that we're preaching going to clean you up. It's going to shape you up or ship you out. And people don't like to be told to their face. I'm an in-your-face preacher. That's right. And I know many of you on social media complain about how we sound. A lot of folks said, uh, you know what, Pastor Jennings, I'm trying to figure out who he sound like. And there was a man who said he sound like this sergeant on some, some movie called uh, uh, Soldier Story. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. One man wrote me and asked me, were you ever in the Marine Corps? I never was in the Marine Corps, but I am in God's army. That's right. That's for sure. That's right. I believe the Bible says how God made the preacher a commander. Yes, God made me a preacher, and God calls me to speak the way I do. I'm not sent to pat you or to uh, praise you. or not, not, I'm not sent for that. If you want that, there's enough mega devils on television where you can get it from. That's right. Me? I'm sent to preach to you the right thing to keep you out of hell. Yeah. Ignore how I sound. Pay attention to what I say. Ignore how I sound. You see, that's the way the devil do. He make you focus on what I sound like. And right then, he ain't loving. Mm -hmm. I want to preach you who's more loving. Amen. No, you want to preach you who a picture like someone rub a cat. We come along and slap you right over with the Bible. For it is not ye that speak. That's what I come. I come in your house, kick your door down, slap you over with the Bible, and run your second husband down the street and tell him, if you don't leave, you're going to hell. That's right. We come do that. That's right. Your pastor come along and say, well... There's nothing wrong with keeping your second husband. Is he taking care of you? Is he nice? And you say, yes. Amen. 
Did he say, well, the Lord work in mysterious ways. It's just keep your second husband. Mm -hmm. And here we come along and take your second husband, thank the Lord, and grind, grind him, him up with the word of God That's and right. deliver him to Jesus. That's right. And you don't like me for that. That's right. I'm an independent preacher. I'm not on a salary. That's why we can preach free. Amen. I'm not getting paid by the board of directors. No. I wasn't elected as a pastor. That's right. You know, some folk elect preachers. That's right. There's, a, uh, there's some churches now ask me, will I be interested in taking over their church? I say, well, if you want me, sure. And they say, well, you got to meet with the board of directors. I say, keep your church. Because if I come in with the board of directors, I'm going to come with the Bible and the board of directors ain't going to want me. That's right. Think of it. I'm a man that the world cannot control. That's true. You can't control me with money. You can't control me with dictating a policy to me. That's right. The only thing governing me is that book. I'm an independent preacher. I'm not on the plantation of America being ruled and bossed by the government of America. That's right. Not me. I'm a free, independent preacher. Amen. The Bible says, he whom the Son hath set free, my God, he's free indeed. So yes, we are free, you know. That's right. Not tied to the shackles of man-made religion. And this is how the devil has fooled so many of us. We are shackled to the religion of men. Yeah. Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, non-denominational, apostolic, Jehovah Witnesses. Undoubtedly, some of you here were victims. Going out in some community, giving out comic books, interrupting people early in the morning, disturbing their family time. They can't even eat breakfast without a bunch of fools with comic books. Right. Knocking on your door, interrupting my fishing grits. That's right. That's right. Just so you can tell me there is no hell. You're going to hell for that lie. Amen. One Jehovah Witness told me that Michael the Archangel was Jesus. I told him, don't you know the difference between the name Jesus and Michael? Michael. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Don't you know the difference between the name Jesus and Michael? If Michael and, Ma and Jesus are the same, why is the Bible don't tell you to call on the name of Michael, Michael. and you can be saved? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Bible don't say neither is there salvation in any other name but the name of Michael. No. Not that. Whosoever. Listen at this. In the book of Romans chapter 10 and at verse 13. Whosoever. Shall call. Shall call. Upon the name of the Lord. But shall call be on saved. the name of who? The name of the Lord. Let's find out what's the Lord's name. Acts chapter 9 and Act verse 5. I want you Jehovah Witnesses to get this. Get this now. I want to say to all my viewers. Because I'm in New York right now. Where the uh, Watchtower have a big factory. Amen. Uh, where well, they print all their lies. Yeah. Oh, listen. Oh, like, oh if, 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 if I can be justified with the Bible, I fly over you and just burn the whole thing to the ground. Amen. Because the watchtower is nothing but a bunch of lies peddled by them that's deceived by the devil God knows. That's right. So you that are watching, when these liars come to your house and telling you there is no hell and there's two gods yeah. and the earth will never burn up, you do to George Jefferson. Yeah. Slam the door in their face and walk away. That's right. Slam it right in their face. That's right. Now you, listen, you Jehovah Witness preachers, you shouldn't take this. You shouldn't let me say this about you and don't do nothing. Amen. You should send me an email right away and say, Pastor Jennings, I'm going to prove to you that there's two gods and there is no hell and that Jesus is going to come to the earth with a big Hoover vacuum Hoover. cleaner and going to clean the whole earth up and make it fit to live. Amen. I'll make you lick that stuff up. I'll pull your tongue from here to Florida. That's and right. I'll make you lick that stuff up, God knows. That's right. What did the Bible say? For whosoever shall call upon the name whoever of the Lord shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What's the Lord's name? Now Acts chapter 9 and at verse 5. What is it? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord, and the said, Lord said, I am Jesus. I'm Michael. I am Jesus. I am Michael the archangel. And the Lord said, I am Jesus. Michael was created. That's right. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Christ created Michael. That's right. 
What are you going to do with that Jehovah Witness? Amen. I said the Spirit of Christ mm -hmm. created Michael, and, the archangel. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 1 and at verse 7. Yes. And of the angels who... Of the angels. He saith. He saith. Who maketh. Who maketh. His angels spirits. You see, Christ made the angels. That's right. And that include he made it, uh, Michael the archangel. That's right. All right, I want to go to work, I believe, in the uh, book of Jasher. Mm -hmm. I want to hear God's complaint mm -hmm. that he had with the human family. Amen. There was a conversation between the Lord and you people that are watching in, your father, the devil. The devil came to the Lord and gave the Lord a report. That's right. And uh, the Lord heard the way his people turned on him. That's right. I want everybody to listen at this closely and then judge yourself according. In the book, All right. In the book of Jasher, chapter 22, and we're at verse 46. Listen. And the day arrived when the sons of God came. Give chapter and verse again. In the book of Jasher, chapter 22, and we're at verse 46. All right. And the day arrived when the sons of God came. Now, hold it. The day arrived when the sons of God came. And placed themselves, and placed before, themselves the Lord. before God. And Satan also came. Every time the people of God gather, the devil's always among them too. That's right. You think everything here want to be right? That's right. Uh, and there's some devils here. Oh, yeah. Well, Pastor Jenny, you think it's me? Thou sayest. <laughs> Amen. I believe when Jesus was among his disciples and he said, uh, uh, one of you going to betray me. And uh, I believe one time he said, one of you is the devil. So uh, they respond, uh, is it I? Is it I? Thou sayest. Mm -hmm. In fact, Jesus told him on one occasion, whatever you do, do quickly. That's right. Amen. So I'm pretty sure everything here don't want to be right. Yeah. Some come because they're curious. Mm -hmm. They've been watching me on YouTube, on television. They want to see am I the same way in person as I am uh, on television. I'm the same. The only difference is you can't turn me off now. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you can't you can get mad and turn me off and, and then watch Dr. Phil or Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that here. No. Hey, man, the screen won't go black here. No, it won't. All you can do is take it and sweat in your chair or hold your finger up and tip out and take a breather. Amen. That's all you can do now. Amen. All right. And the, day, uh, and the day arrived when the sons of God came. Yeah. And placed themselves before the Lord. All right. And Satan also came with the, the sons of God. The devil came with the sons of God. Before the Lord. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Satan. The Lord this is a very interesting scripture. Yes. Give chapter and verse again. Joshua chapter 22. Now we're at verse 46. The Lord said unto said Satan. To the devil. Whence comest thou? Where you coming from devil? And Satan answered the Lord. What? And said from going to and fro in the earth. And from walking up and down in it. I told you the devil is busy. busy. The devil is lurking about where? What? From going to and fro in the earth. I'm walking up and down and the earth. Walking up and down in it. And he's and he proven that he's doing it. Oh, yeah. Look at the effect he has. He's in the White House. Mm -hmm. Certainly the devil's in the White House. Why do you think Trump is such a fool? Amen. Devil's in the White House. Only the devil can make a fool like that. That's right. Huh? That's right. I say only the devil can make any man like Trump. He's devil's maid. Amen. Huh? Amen. Only the devil can make your preacher lie boldly and come to you and say the Lord says for him to have a private jet. That's right. Only the devil can make a man boldly tell the lie on God with no conscience. Mm -hmm. Only the devil can make people take millions of dollars and throw it on a pulpit and let a man run through it and say he's anointing the money. Mm. Only the devil will tell men if you want a blessing, get in this line for a $10,000 prayer line, a yeah. $100,000 prayer line. Only the devil will do this. That's right. He's the greatest of all deceivers. That's right. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou? Where you come from? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro. I'm walking up and down in the earth. And the Lord said to Satan. Listen at this closely. The Lord 
said to Satan, What is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? Now, I want all of you to understand that the devil has someone to report to. That's right. Have you ever been in the church and the preacher said the devil don't have no power? Mm. Haven't they said that? Yes. All the preachers are liars that tell you that. Oh, yeah. If the devil don't have no power, why is it he calls war in heaven? That's right. It takes power to cause war in heaven. That's right. Heaven was peaceful until the devil got there. That's right. So here you have Satan, the God of this world. Amen. Earth was given to the devil. This is his domain. This is why he's so successful in tricking churches, lying to churches, misleading church leaders, tricking church members, giving you a variety of religions, and all of those religions are led by one devil. That's right. Think of it. All of those religions that the world have now are led by one devil. And in those religions, many messengers working for one devil. That's right. Amen. All right. And the Lord said to Satan, what is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? All right. And Satan answered the, the Lord. The devil said to the Lord. And said, I have seen all the children of the earth. I have seen all the people of the earth. And that includes New York. That's right. New York, the devil see you. That's right. The devil see you partying in your church, going on your so-called Christian cruise with your half-naked Christian bikini-wearing women. Yeah. And your swimming trunks men out there on a cruise, half-naked, talking about y'all serving Jesus. Is she walking around with her behind out, <laughs> breasts out, and he's walking around with his private parts exposed, talking about you serving Jesus. It ain't none of you sinners got Jesus on your mind like that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It ain't a man on a cruise ship looking at all them hips, legs, and breasts is thinking about Jesus. No. Am I right, I said? Amen. Amen. Order in the church. That's right. Order in the church, I said. That's right. I glory to God, I want to work on you while I have you here. Amen. What did he say? Satan answered the Lord. The devil answered the Lord. And said, I have seen all the I children of the earth. I have seen all the children of the earth. Who serve thee. That's the catch. That's the catch. That's the catch. That's right. I have seen all the children of the earth that serve thee. You, Lord. I want you folks that go to church to get this right. because the devil is bringing God a report on his people. That's right. Everything in the world that claim to be God's people. That's right. The devil is bringing the Lord a report about God's people. I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee. And serve thee. And remember thee. And they remember you. When they require anything from thee. You see, every time they want something, Lord, then they go to you. That's right. They go to you begging and crying and begging you for this, begging you for that, praying to you for the other. Right. Some praying and get rabbit's foot. Some praying and get beads and moving around. Lucky charms like they magically delicious. And right. Let's get a bunch of lucky charms and try to reach God. That's right. Some people pray to Mary. Mary don't know you. You don't know her because Mary is dead and the Bible said the dead know of nothing. nothing. All right. I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee. And what? And remember Thee. They remember you when they require anything from thee. When they want something. And when thou givest them the thing which remember, they remember. Keep in mind the devil is talking to the Lord. Satan answered the Lord. Satan answered the Lord. And said, I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee. And, what? and remember thee when they require anything from thee. What else? And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee, then what? They sit at their ease and forsake thee. And they remember thee no more. Do you hear that? Amen. Is that the way things are now? That's right. That's right. That's right. Some of you sinners was in the hospital, shot, stabbed, OD. Amen. And on that hospital bed, you start praying, yeah. making promises. That's right. Lord, if you heal me, I'll do this. 
I get my life right. I take care of my family. I stop selling dope. I stop taking dope. I get off the streets. And you meant it. Amen. And then God had mercy upon you. And gave you a chance. That's right. You got cleaned up by God's permission. That's right. Got out of the hospital, left the bloods, left the crypts, yeah. left the gangster disciples, right. left the Hispanic and black and white gangs here in New York and throughout America and the world. But you did it just for a time. And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee, when you give them what they want, they sit at their ease. Now, after God had mercy and answered your prayer, Mr. and Miss, you went right back into the same garbage that your Lord delivered you from. That's right. He answered your prayer. He healed your body. You didn't heal yourself. That's right. You went to the AA and you went to all type of places uh, uh, to get delivered from cocaine but none of them can reach down in your soul and get rid of the taste but God, but God. Right. amen you can sit around a circle and talk which is good my name is uh, Gino I've been clean for five months my name is Williams I've been clean for five minutes and, amen <laughs> My name is Shade is Shade and I'm still trying to get clean. <laughs> My name is Rick with a camera and I've been clean well so short I don't know how long. <laughs> but nevertheless, yeah. everybody that's in the drug rehabilitation system and the alcohol rehabilitation system, you need a force greater. Then talk. That's right. Greater than a mentor. That's right. Greater than a doctor. You need a power that can get down in your blood. That's it. Glory to God. That's right. That's right. You need a source that can get down in your heart and curve, clean, remove the appetite. And the internal lust. That's it. That's right. You see, talking about deliverance don't deliver you. No, oh, that gang man can talk about, I don't want the gang, I don't want the shoot, I don't want the rape, I don't want the lie. You can talk all you want, but there's nothing that can snatch you off the street like God can. That's right. If you leave the streets of New York and leave the streets of America physically, but your mind is still out there and your heart is still out there, it won't so long, your body gonna go out there. That's right. Nothing can clean you up like God. It ain't a man, a black man, a white man, a brown man can clean you up like God. That's right. Who know a man better than God? Amen. Think of it. You take a man that sell a car, Versus a man that work in the car factory that build the car. Who you think know the car better? Amen. The man that work in the factory on the assembly line that builds the car, he knows the car better than the one that sell it. That's right. He knows where every bolt is. He don't need a manual. No. No, no. But the one that's selling the car, you ask him a question, he got to go to the manual. The one that build the car, he knows the car because he's a part taker of the car creator. That's right. Creating. Now God made us oh yes he know where you're weak yeah. he know where you're vulnerable yeah. he know what you're struggling with that's right he know what you're trying to overcome Amen. even when you lie to yourself and say well i'm not weak here and i'm not weak there stop lying that's right if you think you so busy you want to fool yourself? You can't fool God. No, no. Listen. I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee. I have seen all the children of the earth that serve thee. And remember thee when they require anything from thee. They remember you only when they want something. And when thou givest them the thing which and they require from thee. And when you give them what they want, Lord. They sit at their ease. All of a sudden they get content. They get content. 
It's like a lot of preachers. I often make this scenario. A lot of preachers may have a little storefront church, as they call it. And some of them were strict, believed the Bible, feared God. But then all of a sudden, their church may start getting as big as this room. Start holding a few hundred. And as large as the crowd get, the more things in the scriptures he get rid of and no longer believe. That's right. Then all of a sudden he get a mega church and just throw the Bible in the trash altogether. That's right. Now things start to come in the church that never was there. Amen. It never was there. Now praise dancers is all in the church. You can go on YouTube. They got pole dancers. My Lord, my Lord. There are churches that got a club pole. Where so-called Christian women slide down the pole in the church. My Lord, my Lord. And men in church, including that no good, rotten, cheap pimp that you call a pastor. Amen. He'll come along and put money right down in the blouse of the women of the church. My Lord. And Amen. Church now is nothing but a club. That's right. It's a party. It's a racket. It's a game. That's right. Lord, I take God and they do this with no fear and no respect towards the God of heaven. That's right. Listen. And when thou givest them the thing which they require When from God thee, give you what you want. They sit at their ease. Listen, before God answers your prayer, how faithful were you? Amen. How sincere were you? God, I, I, some people, Lord, Jesus, Lord, please bless me with a car. God bless me with a car. They ride by the church. That's right. Lord, bless me with a job. God bless me with a job. They backslide from church. Amen. Some people, they was faithful when they didn't hardly have no money. God bless them with money. Now the money took them. Women got them. Club got them. Drinking got them. Liquor got them. Everything got them but the Lord. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee. When you, when the people get what they ask for. They sit at their ease. Bible says woe. Unto them. Unto them. That are at ease. That are, do you hear this? In the book of Amos chapter 6 and at verse 1. Solomon. Woe to them. That means I'm sorry for you. There's some punishment coming. Mm -hmm. Woe to them. That are ease at in Zion. That are ease. Mm -hmm. Woe to them that, that are at ease. Woe unto them that are what? Woe unto them that are at ease. At ease. In Zion. That's the condition of the churches. That's right. Amen. I, uh, my brother, brother uh, Clyde, he was interviewing me yesterday. He asked me, how, where did you get this passion from? From telling the truth, I told him I can't help myself. God put it in me. Oh, yeah. You know, every real trial of God who really wants to be right, they're not at ease in this life. No. When they have an understanding. That's right. You see, the moment you get at ease and get content and get laid back and get so spiritually casual mm -hmm. in God, now you open the room up for the devil to deceive you, trick you, Make a fool out of you. Because what happened, God's people began to overestimate themselves and underestimate Satan. That's right. That's right. And when you underestimate Satan, that makes the devil give him more leverage to make a fool out of you. You better give him the book of Revelation now. Amen. Because God wants us to be one or the other. Hot or cold. Huh? Eh? I said, God want us to be hot mm -hmm. or cold. I want you to follow me and get this. Now in the book of Revelation chapter 3, and we'll start at verse 14. All right. And unto the angel of the church of the Lodosians write. What is it? These things saith the amen. Saith who? The amen. That's who God is. God is the amen. Amen means faithful witness. Mm -hmm. You see, God bear witness of himself. Mm -hmm. Because he know he always speak the truth. That's right. That's why he he's the amen. The amen. Uh -huh. The faithful and true witness. The faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. The beginning of the creation of God. Creation didn't get here until God got it active. That's right. All right. I know thy word. Listen that God talking. Here's God fouling a complaint again. I know thy works. I know thine works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. Now I want all of you to get this real good and listen well. And then judge yourself and see where you are. Mm -hmm. God says, I, I know, know works, your works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. You're not cold. And you're not hot. Now hold it. You see? 
I remember I was in Newport News preaching this and I posed a question to the people. How many here, and I'm going to pose the same question to you. How many here want to be cold? Raise your hand. Only a few want to be cold. A few. <laughs> How many here want to be hot? Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. How many don't know which what they want to be? <laughs> Some say, Pastor Jennings, I don't want to be cold because the Bible says when iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's not the type of cold that God is talking about. No. Now I want you to pay close attention to this. I know thy work. God say, I know what you're doing. That thou art neither cold you're nor hot. You're not cold. You're not hot. Mm -hmm. All right? I would. Uh oh I would. God saying, I prefer. That thou art cold. Well, he ain't talking about sin because God don't want us to be in sin. That's right. But God said, I prefer. I would that thou art cold. That you're cold. Or hot. Or hot. You got to be one or the other. That's right. That's right. Now, That's right. let's see what cold represents. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get this. You know, if you go out and buy a fresh chicken, that chicken is limber. Amen. But if you and if I take that fresh limber meat and hit you on the head with it, it may hurt you. You know, but you'll get over it. But let me put it in a deep freezer for about two weeks. <laughs> and when I pull it out and then hit you, the effect will be so much greater. That's right. Because now it's firm. That's right. It's solid. So here's the Lord say, I'd rather that you be cold. cold. God wants you to be firm. Solid because coldness is a preservative. It preserves you. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. Listen at this. Now in the book of Jude, chapter 1 and at verse 1. What is it? Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. And brother of James. Brother of James. As to them that are sanctified by God the Father. And, and preserved. What? And preserved. And preserved. In Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. Yeah. You know, when you're cold, you're preserved. Preserved. Uh, you that's in the back, you that listen, there's seats right up here. You can just bring them right on up here. Just let them come on in. Come on in right up here. You ain't got to try to cram them back there. There's no more room back there. Let them come on in. What did he say? Jew, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. All right. To them that are sanctified by God the Father. What is it? And preserved in Jesus Christ. You know, when you put meat in the freezer or put vegetables in the freezer, the cold preserve it. Preserve it. Think of it. The cold preserve you. Make you firm. That's right. Make you solid. That's right. Now, the Lord said, I rather I that, would. I rather, I would. That thou were cold. God want us to be cold first. Mm -hmm. When you're cold, you're firm. Right. Steadfast. Yeah. Solid. Mm -hmm. We have a good cold gospel. That's right. Make you firm. Right. We don't move. No. We're steadfast in our belief. We're steadfast in our God, very cold, solid. That's right. Amen. Not moving at all. Not even dripping. That's right. Eh? That's right. Glory to God, an icicle don't drip in zero weather. That's right. Amen. The moment that icicle start to drip, there's something in the climate that changes. That's right. There's changes. Now, there are some preachers was good ice preachers. Yeah. They were ice men. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. But all of a sudden, something in the church changed. Yeah. Climate change. Yeah. The temperature began to go up. Yes. Money began to pile up. Right. And that preacher now starting to drip. That's right. And every icicle that drip gets smaller, yes. smaller, and smaller until it get loose and fall. That's right. And that's exactly what's happening with religion. That's right. They have all fell away from God's everlasting word. The devil have caused them to fall away. Every type of rotten, no good unbelief have stepped in the church. The people are dancing into it, playing with it, partying along with it, and they call it Christianity. That's right. That's right. It's an insult to the scriptures. Amen. The Bible says what? I would. God said I would. That thou were cold. That you were cold or hot. <laughs> he wants you to be one of the two. One of the two. Amen. God made me a cold preacher. Yes. 
Yes, he did. Hmm? Yes, he did. And I'm a heart preacher. That's right. The Bible says, didn't our heart burn Amen. while he speak with us? That's right. So think of it. Hot, steadfastness, firm. When heat come, heat is a purifying thing. That's right. You know, when anybody get bit by a venomous snake, some methods they apply heat. Oh, yeah. They get all the venom out. Now, when you got some type of religious teaching in you that contradict the word, I got to take the heat of the gospel. To get all that venom out, burn it out. That's right. Because if I, if the word of God don't burn it out, you're going to fight for it. Yes, you will. And you're going to defend it. That's right. And some people are cold in their sins. That's right. So you that are cold in your sins, you need to be melted by the word. That's right. And you that are cold following the word of God, you need heat. To make you more firm and solid in the word. That's right. I want to be a cold preacher. Oh, yes. Don't say, Pastor Jenny, you're cold-blooded. All right. <laughs> I mean, I want to be cold. I, I want to be so cold until I never flex or oh, yeah. blink a sixteenth of an inch in detouring from the word of God. As the cold of snow. In other words, listen, you take a corpse. When that corpse dies and they put it in the freezer... You can put anything in front of a corpse. Oh, yeah. Women can walk by a corpse. A fly can land on a corpse's nose. He ain't laying there. Corpse is there. Corpse don't notice nobody around. No. The Bible talk about the church and say, ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. That's right. And that's the way God people must be. You got to be so cold and so dead and so solid and so firm in God. There's nothing out there in the street that distract you away from him. That's right. Huh? Amen. Nothing out there. Amen. Is a distraction. No man, no woman, no money, no person, no place, no thing, nothing. Nothing. Fame, notoriety, nothing. For, In other words, nothing you run upon switch your desire that now you have a greater desire for that than God. That's right. That's right. Because in order for anything to get your attention more than God. It got to replace God in your life. That's right. Why do you think so many people have been moved out of the will of God and been moved out of serving God because something came in their life and when it got their attention, it held it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the long, longer that thing hold your attention, the more distracted you become. That's right. The more distracted you become, the more weaker you become. Amen. The more weaker you become, the more things of the world you start to do. Right. The more things of the world you start to do, then sin become more of a part of your everyday life. That's right. The more sin become a part of your everyday life, sin become more easier to perform. That's right. The more sin become more convenient for you to perform, your fear for God get less and less until you leave God and you're back out there like a dog. That's right. Give me the book of Peter. In the book of 2 Peter. Follow me in your Bible. In the book of 2 Peter chapter 2. Glory to God, what did he say? And we're at verse 20. Listen. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world. Do you hear this? After they have escaped. Here it is. God done bless us to come out of the world. We have a lot to thank God for. Amen. There's millions and millions of people watching now whom the Lord delivered from falsehood, from all type of wild lifestyles because of this message of holiness. That's right. I get thousands of testimonies every day from around the world how they thank God for this message. Amen. Amen. God Almighty has showed mercy. And delivered all of us from something. That's right. And some of us is still being delivered from something. Amen. What did he say there? For if after they have escaped the pollutions of if the world. If after. If after you have escaped the pollutions of the world. How did we escape? Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You hear that? Amen. 
That's why the truth of God no. message is all over the air and all over social media and on television and all over radio because God knows his knowledge will set you free. That's right. A lot of time we are in things and doing things because we don't know no better. Yeah. Or somebody told us who we got confidence in that is all right to do. That's right. And you know when you already want to do wrong and somebody come along and tell you it's all right to do it, you know what? It sounds good to you. Oh, yeah. You believe it right away. Oh, yes. <laughs> Glory to God, what is it? For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world. How? Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then what? They are again. What? They are again. Wait a minute. What happened? They are again. What happened to them again? Entangled therein and overcome now after you don't escape off the club yeah. got rid of all your drugs and your liquor that's right you realize you love god now more than you love that second husband so you gave him up that's right mm -hmm. amen. amen you realize you love god more than your third wife you gave her up mm -hmm. because your first wife is still living amen. she's in texas <laughs> <laughs> amen Right. You gave it up. That's right. Thank God. Knowledge Escaped. caused you to make your escape. Escaped. Now, the knowledge of God challenged your love for sin. That's right. That's right. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. The knowledge, I want everybody to hear me. The knowledge of God challenged your love for sin. Yeah. Because one thing about sin, it put a smile on your face. Yes, it will. Let the church say amen. Yeah. <laughs> sin make you happy. You're happy. Have you ever been to a church and hear people testify, I was living a miserable life of sin? Were you miserable when you was doing it? No. no. You was just as happy as a peacock flaunting his feathers. That's right. You take that woman, go to the club. Sometime when that man and woman go to the club, they start shaking and bobbing their head before they went in the building. True. They can hear the music blocks away, and they like, it's on, it's on. I mean, they behind the wheel, just fighting. They live, and the moment they get out the car, all the way to the club, just shake it. And when they walk in the club door, here we go, here we go, here we go. Happy. Happy. <laughs> yeah? That's right. Hey, Amen. The music make that devil in you jolly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, thank God. That's right. The wicked love it. Amen. Hey, Amen. But when knowledge hits knowledge. you, knowledge. You see, sin make you very relaxed and make you at ease. at ease. And whenever anybody speak against your sin, you retaliate. Yeah. Because it is the nature of the wicked to protect their wicked behavior. That's right. Huh? Yes. That's right. And let me say it again. It's the nature of the wicked. It's the nature of a sinner to do what it takes to protect their wrong. That's right. Why you think when the police come raid a house, that drug dealer go take dope, flush it down the toilet, throw it out the window? Why? He knows something he ain't got no business doing. Amen. Some of you so foolish, you go take a bunch of cocaine to eat it. Mm. And then die. You mean to tell me you willing to die for a bag of flour? <laughs> My Lord. Come on now. You ought to love your life better than that. That's right. Amen. I, listen, I'd rather spend 20 years in jail. Then let my body explode because I don't want the cops to catch me with a bag of cocaine. Amen. And here I'm going to cram it down my throat and then my throat just expand and explode. My bowels gush out and now here I am dead, ready to go to a Christless grave because I love cocaine so much I'm willing to die for it. I and let me say to you young drug dealers and sellers in the street, you're the fool. Yeah. You, don't, don't tell me you're a man. You ain't nothing but a drug hoe for your drug dealer. That's because right. he's not the one that get caught. You're the one get caught. You're the one that served time. That's and right. then he's out here still selling. And then when you in jail, next thing you know, your friend come in, your brother come in, your sister come in, your daddy come in. All of y'all had a family reunion in the same cell. Amen. And the one you're working for, don't get caught. That's true. Wake up and stop being a drunk selling fool. That's right. Someone said, Pastor Jennings, why don't you say it nicer than that? All right, wake up wake and up. stop being a drug selling fool. Is that <laughs> nice enough for you? Amen. 
What did he say? After they have escaped the pollutions After of the world. you have escaped the pollution. 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 Sin is pollution. Mm -hmm. Cigarette sucking. Cigar sucking. Uh, even this uh, vapor, vapor cigarettes. That's right. You know the devil's so slick. Yeah. The devil always come out with something and then you think it's not hurting you. Mm -hmm. And you can hear them all over the air. Well, we haven't determined what the vapor do to you. Here you just breathing all this stuff in and you don't know what it's doing to you. Face the fact, the nature of your body wasn't designed to keep inhaling smoke. No. Huh? No. Hey Amen. You're not designed for that. No, no. Come on, son. After they have escaped the pollutions of the world. How did they come off? The streets. Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You see the knowledge of God and make that woman put clothes on. That's true. You won't be out here showing your legs and all that stuff no more. Saying you look attractive and make you feel sexy mm -hmm. to wear a dress only the length of my jacket. Mm -hmm. why, why you got to feel sexy? Why can't you feel beautiful serving the Lord? That's right. That's right. That's right. Huh? Wonderful. My God, think of it. Why you got to apply the word sex to everything? everything. You, you got to be sexy because your blouse is as low as my jacket. Mm. You think it's sexy showing your breasts so a bunch of men can look. Mm. And then you want to pretend, why don't you stop looking at me? Why don't you go put some clothes on? That's right. Huh? That's right. How would you? I, I, well, that's the same way you men. You men out here, me hey man, with your pants hanging down, showing your underwear. I would to God that you realize how hell bound dumb and trifling like as that devil out of hell you look. That's right. To be walking the streets with your underwear showing, looking uneducated, uncivilized. Listen, someone from a barbaric tribe look more civilized than you. That's right. And then you put a belt on and the belt is wrapped around your thighs like a hefty trash bag. Amen. Huh? Amen. And you men... Go ahead, man. You men that are fathers of sons, the moment your son is five and six years old, here you got your little son with his ears pierced and with his pants hanging down, walking around with artificial Timberland boots, and you teach your son, amen, you teach your son how to call women uh, B-I-T-C-H's. Yes. And then you address your son and say, this is my little pimp. Now look at what you're teaching your son, you fool. Look at what you're teaching your son, That's right. Mr. Foolish. Hey, Mr. Foolish, look at what you're teaching your son. That's right. When he learn what a pimp is, he's going to love it. Because a pimp is a womanizer. That's right. And if you don't address your son as pimp, you call him dog. Now you're saying he's a trash eater. Yeah. I'm not a pimp or a dog. I'm a man made by hands of heaven. That's right. I wouldn't answer to such a low thing. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. But look how foolish you women have become. The rappers are sang a song and call you female dogs. Yeah. And you in the club just dancing to it. I'm a female dog. I'm a female dog. I'm a female dog. Oh, 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 oh. I'm a female dog. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am I right, man? Amen. <laughs> Why? Why would you glory in being a B-I-T-C-H? Why? That the rappers will call you that and it make you smile. That's right. But yet a man call your daughter that you're ready to fight. Yeah. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Knowledge, Knowledge. will clean you up. That's right. And, and you bear in mind, these are so-called Christians. Yeah. This go on in the house of the Christian. That's right. This party go on in the churches of the so-called Christian. Amen. You're not in a church. You're in Bell's house. Oh, yes. You're in the house of Satan. That's right. All right, son. After they have escaped. Get chapter and verse again. Now in 2 Peter chapter 2, still in verse 20. All right. After they have escaped the pollutions of the world. Have you escaped it yet? You that are here in Bronx, New York, and you that are watching around the world, have you escaped the world pollution? Have you? Have you? Just look at yourself. Are you still going out and see how many more tattoos you can get? You haven't escaped the pollution. No. Brother, are you attracted to men? Mm. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Then you haven't escaped the pollution. No. Sister, do you want to marry a woman? Mm. Then you haven't escaped the pollution. Do you got on somebody else's hair, Mr. and Miss? 
Amen. You haven't escaped the pollution. That's right. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 Brother, do you got earrings in your ear? Your ear. God already, he gave you holes right here. That's right. That's enough. That's right. Sister, you got earrings, you haven't escaped the pollution. Mm. Are you serving three gods, a trinity? Mm. You haven't escaped the pollution. That's right. Are you under women preachers, women evangelists, women bishops? Yeah. Well, my mama's a preacher. Your mama's a liar. <laughs> Amen. You talking about my mama? Yeah, I'm talking about your mama. That's right. Go ahead, brother. I ain't going behind your mama's back. Your mama is a liar. Your, your mama, mama. is a liar. That's right. Go ahead, yeah, God. You hear what I said? I said your mama. I said your mama, your mama. and your grandmama Amen. and your grandmama's mama. Amen. That God have never called a woman to preach the gospel since He been God. That's right. Huh? That's right. Have you escaped the pollution? The pollutions of the world. Are you out here divorcing and remarrying? Go ahead. You are. You got a polluted relationship. Yeah. Every time, listen, when you get in that bed with that man and you know your first husband living, you're having polluted sex. Go ahead, man. You have a polluted bed. Go ahead. Your bed is full of adultery. That's right. You live in a polluted house. And when you wear the last name of a man and yet your first husband living, you got a polluted marriage license. That's right. You had a polluted wedding. Yeah. Huh? Amen. It's after. After they have escaped the pollutions of the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to hit your heart today. Go ahead. I'm going to hit your heart. Yes, I am. Amen. Hey man, you, look, 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 New York, New York, you're supposed to be a tough town anyway. You should be able to handle this type of preaching. That's right. Huh? Go ahead. Hey Amen. You should be able to handle it. Go ahead. Hey Amen. But yet, yet on the other hand, on the other hand, I do know that you got folks walking around here, here in New York also. And you think I'm that type of preacher, but I'm not. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey Amen. I'm that type of preacher that step to you. And roll, roll on you. Roll, roll on you. Roll on you. I'll work you over with God everlasting word. Preach it, brother. Yeah. That's what I'm sent to do. You see, your pastor, he I'll just come it. along and hit you. You got to be a nice Christian. That's why you sit there in bed with that man that ain't your husband and that woman that ain't your wife. And you go to a gay church and all oh, that hey. foolishness. And you say, well, I got gay friends. I don't have a gay friend at all. That's right. Not at all. Not at all. Amen. Go ahead. A man or a woman that's homosexual is a sinner. That's right. That's right. Give me James 4 and 4. James 4 and 4. That's right. Come on, my God, man. Follow me. Get me in the Bible. Come on, son. Move quick. James 4 and 4. And at verse 4. I want all of you to get this. And don't go going out and say, that man preaching hate. I'm preaching Bible. That's right. And if any of you here is offended, then just straighten up. Sister Dyke and Mr. Gay, straighten up. That's right. You might as well straighten up. Brother, you might as well get your hands off your hips. And sister, you may just start walking around. Hey, what's your name? That's right. You don't like what I'm preaching, you shouldn't be in here. Amen. If you think I'm any different in person than I am over the air, I'm not. No. I'm not. I kill you over the air now. I kill you while I got you here. That's right. Doesn't the killing feel good? Amen. Huh? Amen. Huh? James chapter 4 and verse 4. But we'll give chapter and verse again. James chapter 4 and at verse 4. James 4 and 4. You adulterers. Ye adulterers. And adulteresses. No, you know not, not that the friendship, friendship of the world is enmity with God. How in the world are you going to say that a homosexual is your friend? Friend. The Bible says the friendship of, of the, the world, world is enmity with God. If you are friends with a homosexual and claim that y'all are so close enmity. and so enmity. tight, it puts you at odds with God. Whosoever, therefore, the Bible says, whosoever, therefore, therefore, will be a friend of will the world. Be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Is what? Is the enemy of God. Is what? Is the enemy of God. Is what? Is the enemy of God. And don't get upset with me. That's right. Whosoever, therefore. Whosoever. 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 Whosoever, therefore. What about the mayor? Whosoever. What about the governor? Whosoever. What about the pastor? Whosoever. What about the president? Whosoever. What about Congress? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of Democrats. the world. Whosoever. Republicans. Whosoever. Whosoever, therefore. Amen. I don't care who you are. Whosoever. Black man. Whosoever. White man. Whosoever. Brown man. Whosoever. Yellow man. Whosoever. Amen. 
Bishop, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, deacon, fat, skinny, bald, hairy, blind, your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, whosoever what? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world. How do God feel about it? Is the enemy of God. Is the enemy of God. Was the enemy. Is the enemy of God. Maybe he's an enemy. Is the enemy of God. Whosoever therefore. Amen. I didn't write that. James chapter 4 and verse 4. I didn't put that in there. James chapter 4 and verse 4. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world. I ain't, I'm not close to no homosexual. No, no. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. That's your friend. No, he's not my friend. That's your friend. Well, do you hate him? No, I hate his deeds. That's right. I don't hate the individual, but I hate his deeds. That's right. I, I, I'm not, a, if a person is a homosexual, that don't mean they can't hold a job. No. Homosexual. A lot of homosexuals got good work ethics. That's right. I'm not talking about that. No. I'm talking about your deeds. Yeah. Marrying a man and you a man. Yeah. I just can't see what a man see in another man. Amen. And that man ain't got no curves, no nothing. No nothing. I mean, he ain't got nothing to make you look at. <laughs> Some men look at a woman, she got so many curves, he got to bend his neck to look at her. That's right. Huh? Amen. A man ain't got to do that looking at another man. He just. Huh? Shut up, Shaq. That's right. You see men walking the street looking at the women. He's leaning. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Uh, he's leaning. Man look at a man. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Whosoever therefore, and I realize that. Amen. <laughs> whosoever, whosoever therefore will be a friend man, this of is, the world. This is written here. Written. This is written. Oh yes. Preachers, if people say, "Oh man, that man's homophobic." I'm not homo nothing. This is written in your Bible. Give chapter and verse again. James chapter four and at verse four. All right. Ye adulterers, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not? That the friendship of the world, the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will Whoever be a, friend of, is the a world, friend of the world is the enemy of God. I didn't write that. All right, let's go back to where you were in the book of Peter. Back in 2 Peter chapter 2 and at verse 20. Follow me. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world. I want to encourage all of you that are here and you that are watching to escape the world's pollution. That's right. And one thing that the devil have used to pollute the world is religion. Oh, yes. My God, man, there's so much religion out here in New York. Got wall to wall. There's almost as much churches as it is pizza stores. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And New York is full of pizza, brother. Oh, yeah. I mean, New York pizza is some of the best pizza out here. That's right. Hey, Amen. I'm not much of a pizza eater all the time, man, but when I come to New York, I just got to get some. <laughs> When you go through these false churches, my God, they just serve you up lies. Oh, yeah. Next door to each other. Church, 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 church. And I guarantee you can go to 50 churches yeah. in one day. And I promise you, every last one of them going to lie to you. That's right. Every last one of them. That's right. Is a disgrace before God. Mm -hmm. Don't you hear Jesus plainly said, Upon this rock I build my church. My church. That means he only got one church. That's right. Jesus only got one church, one doctrine, one truth, one message, one standard, one law, one gospel given from one God. That's right. That's all he had. That's right. Everybody's supposed to have the same thing. Same. Every preacher's supposed to speak the same thing. Same. Don't you know that? That's right. You better give us first Corinthians. Follow me in your Bible. First Corinthians. First Follow me in your Bible. Follow me in your Bible. Listen at this. First Corinthians chapter one and at verse ten. First Corinthians chapter one, begin at verse ten. Now I beseech you, brethren. Now I beseech you, brethren. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what? That ye all speak the same thing. Wait a minute. Amen. Ye all do what? That ye all speak the same thing. Same thing. Ye all do what? That ye all speak the same thing. Every church you go in. You're supposed to hear the same message. Same thing. That's you have right. no business coming in the church and here's a preacher getting up and saying, well, I'm so glad that we're gathered today at this Baptist assembly. Wait, 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 wait. We're supposed to be holy. That's right. Another church getting up saying we honor the Pope. Wait a minute. We're supposed to be holy. Amen. 
Another one saying, we're glad to see all of our black people here. Wait a minute, we're supposed to be holy. That's right. Another church saying, white power. Wait a minute, we're supposed to be holy. That's right. Now I beseech you, brethren, now by, I beseech you, brethren by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the Christ, name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That ye all speak the same thing. And when everybody had the same thing, what's the result? And that there be no divisions among you. There won't be no argument. No argument. Won't be no argument, no fight, no fuss. Amen. Everybody got the same thing. That's right. Everybody believed the same thing. That's right. Everybody practiced the same thing. I mean, face the fact, when Jesus walked the earth, he had 12 apostles. Mm -hmm. And when he sent those apostles out, they didn't go out starting 12 different religions. No. no. Even the Apostle Paul came on later. That's right. Same thing. Came on after the death of Christ. That's right. He had the same, same spirit thing. that the others had that walked with him in the flesh. That's right. My God, he didn't come with nothing different. No. He had the exact same thing. I'm saying that to say this. Every man that's walking this earth that claim he represents Jesus, your teaching, your faith, your belief, you supposed to profess the same profession that the apostles profess before many witnesses today. That you all speak the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. And, what? and that there be no divisions among you. The reason why there's division, everybody got something different. Something different. Everybody got something different. That's right. You got some religion saying that God don't exist. You got some religion that's walking around saying that man is the only God there is. Yeah. Other religions saying that uh, God is white. Others saying God is black. One man said that he's God and he's Asian. <laughs> My Lord. My Lord. <laughs> Amen. I would love to get a hold of that Asian God and break him down real good with the Bible. That's right. So you have all these religions started by men. God is not the author of confusion. Do you hear the word talking? That you all speak the same thing. That you speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among and you. And there won't be no fight. But that you be perfectly joined together. How well? Perfectly joined together. How well? Perfectly joined together. How shall we think? In the same mind. Wait a minute. In the same mind. How shall we think? In the same mind. If we got the same mind, you see today they don't have the same mind. Because in some religions, my brother here, brother James, couldn't come in. No. They ain't got the same mind. Same mind. In some religions, I couldn't get in the door. That's true. Because I don't have the same skin color. That's right. But when you have the same thing the apostles have, you have one message for all people, all nations in the world. But that you be perfectly joined together. Same mind. In the same mind. And then how would you look at things? And in the same judgment. Oh, you are judging the same. Same judgment. Huh? Same judgment. I look at what the Bible says. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why am I telling you to be saved? Bow your head. Mm. Raise your hand. Why am I telling you to accept Christ as your personal Savior? That's right. Why am I telling you join the church? That's right. Why am I telling you baptism is an outward sign of inward grace? Why am I telling you you don't have to be baptized? Mm -hmm. We're supposed to believe the same thing and use the same judgment. That's you all speak the same thing. And if we use the same judgment, one don't sprinkle and the other take you all the way in. That's right. Perfectly. We use together. the same judgment. One don't squirt you with a water hose and the other take you in. That's right. If we use the same judgment, one don't put a little bit of water in his hand and pour it over your baby's forehead. That's right. We'll take the whole body in according to the judgment of scriptures. That's right. If after you have escaped the, the pollutions, pollutions of the world. Of the world. Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Knowledge sets us free. That's right. Then what? They are again. They are again. Entangled therein. There are some people been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, know it's one God, and then the devil turned them and they left the truth of the gospel and went right out to something else. That's right. I have baptized thousands in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And there's some folk turned against the name of Jesus Christ and went and got baptized over Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost and wrote me back and said, I've done it over because I want to wash the name off. <laughs> My Lord. There are people that knew women preachers was wrong, left the truth, and went and sat under their mama. That's right. It ain't nobody got a greater influence on me than God. Amen. Nobody. Amen. My wife, my children, my brothers, my sisters, nobody, nobody have a greater influence on me than God. That's nobody. Right. 
God forbid if Williams would divorce his wife and go marry a second woman, he ain't reading up here. No way. No I way. don't care nothing about we grew up together. Right then, our friendship is at war. At war. I'm snatching the Bible from him That's and right. throw him out the pulpit. That's right. He ain't reading up here. No, he ain't, no you ain't up here. No, no. Huh? No way. Well, Pastor Jennings, you knew him how long? Then let hell know him longer. That's right. Huh? That's true. I put the word of God in front of him. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. What is it? After they have escaped the pollutions of the world. Have you escaped today? You that are watching and listening, you got to escape. And you that are here, you have some pollution escape. you need to escape. That's right. Look at the man you drove with here. Mm. Look at the woman who clothes you buying. Amen. Is she your wife? Mm. Pastor Jenna, talk about something else, man. <laughs> right now, I'm on this, man. That's right. Is she your wife? Oh, Pastor Jennings, the Bible said uh, uh, that I can divorce if my wife commit fornication. And ain't a married woman on the earth ever commit fornication. No. A married woman commits adultery. Commit adultery. That's right. Hmm? That's right. When you single and got a mind to get married, that man go out and before the marriage take place, you can get rid of him or he can get rid of you. Yeah. Or if you married and adultery take place, you can separate. Separate. But God said, I hate divorce. That's right. Well, my pastor, I keep telling you, your pastor is a liar. How many times I got to keep telling you this? Amen. Your pastor is nothing but a liar sent to you from the devil. That's but right. Pastor Dennis, my father told me this. Your father was a liar. That's but right. Pastor Dennis, my father got his second wife. Your father is an adulterous liar. That's right. Have you noticed how the Bible ain't related to you at all? Amen. This ain't all in the family. This is all in the Bible. For the Lord God. That's, huh? that's right. This ain't no all in the family. Man, this is all in scripture here. In the book of Malachi chapter 2 and at verse 16. Malachi 2, 16 says. For the Lord, the God of Israel. Look at all the churches here in New York. Just to find divorce and remarry, the apostolics, the Pentecostals, the non-denominational, the so-called seven-day Adventists, the Baptists, the Methodists, so many of you cheap, man-made, flesh-pleasing, flesh-loving, adulterous, shackled, and twerking religion. Go ahead, man. And you claim you represent God, you represent idolatry, you represent the pleasure of the the pleasure of the flesh, you don't represent God. Every bishop in the state of New York and America that justify divorce, you're nothing but sinners. That's right. Every bishop that got a second wife and your first wife is living, you are a sinner. That's right. I don't care if he's your pastor, you're being pastored by a sinner. Mm -hmm. Did you hear the old troublemaker? Malachi. I don't care if your pastor is your daddy. Your daddy is a sinner. That's right. That goes for your diocese bishop, your district elder, your little junior elder that don't exist. Mm. Amen. Junior elders like a three dollar bill. They don't exist. don't exist. You got junior elders and junior bishops and junior deacons. My God, man, you're not even a junior devil. That's you're right. just of the devil. That's it. Junior missionary. You ain't a missionary at all. At all. Do you hear what the word of God said? In Malachi chapter 2 and at verse 15. What I'm doing, I'm turning on the ventilation of the scripture. They clear out all pollution. That's right. Huh? That's right. What is it? Malachi chapter 2 and at verse 15. Malachi 2 verse 15. Therefore, Therefore take heed to your spirit. Uh-oh. I right, make sure you read all the verse. Malachi 2 and verse 15. Listen. And did he not make one. Yeah, I, when, you, when you get them, I want you to read all of it. Don't go getting bits and pieces of it. Right. Did he what? And did he not make one? Did he not make one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit. Yes. And wherefore one? Wherefore one? That he might seek a godly seed. Then what? Therefore take heed to your spirit. Pay attention to your spirit. And let none deal treacherously against the wife of, the, of his youth. You hear that? Amen. You that want to divorce your wife mm -hmm. and get another one? Because that woman is buying you jewelry, yeah. buying you suits, buying you shoes because you're too cheap to buy something for yourself. That's right. <laughs> Take heed to your spirit, Take you bum. That's right. Huh? That's right. You out there won't even take care of your own wife and children. 
But all of a sudden, you want to take care of some other woman, hips and her children? Yeah. Take heed to your spirit, you trifling, church-going bum. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. And do you hear this? Take heed to your spirit. I want this to be good. I got any man watching it, any man here. I don't care if you claim you got the Holy Ghost so well so until well. scriptures is tattooed on your back. Hmm. Yeah, and they glow up at night. Amen. Take heed any, to your spirit. Any time you're going to take care of another woman and her children and you neglect your wife and your children, take heed to your spirit. And don't you tell that lie and say, well, Pastor Jennings, the Holy Ghost moved on me. No, your lust moved on you. That's your right. Bible church going center. That's right. Then you see, you're able to pull the, the wool over somebody else's eyes and you go to church and you keep feeding that money and paying for that woman's sex. Bless God, help your wicked, perverted heart. And you reject your wife and reject your son and reject your daughters and you can go to some church he color about shot I'm a bum, I'm a bum, I'm a bum, I'm a bum, I'm a bum. He yeah, that's right. That's right. You're right. You're a bum. Amen. Let me see your tongue that out. Ha! I'm a bum. Get that out. <laughs> ha! I'm a bum. Get that out. That's right. Every time a spirit hit you, ha! I'm a bum. Glory. I love the mock. I mock the heathen, you know. That's right. I might. It ain't that much Holy Ghost in that dog's tail. Here you go and neglect your wife and your children and take care of some other woman and their children. Amen. And you claim you speaking in tongue? You a faker. The Holy Ghost is not moving on you. That's right. The Spirit of God is not dealing with you. Right. You go get a job and take care of your wife and children or pack your bags up and get ready to go to hell. Amen. Mr. Bishop, Mr. Elder, Mr. Pastor, and Mr. Deacon, you get ready for your journey to hell. That's right. Because the hell you going. That's right. What did he say? Therefore, take heed to your spirit. You see why they hate Pastor Jennings? There's no filter to this gospel. No, no. It just pours out. That's right. Huh? That's right. Take heed. Take heed to your spirit. Lord, take God to your spirit. And let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. Yes. For the Lord, the, the God of Israel. The Lord, the God of Israel said. That he hateth putting away. No, the Lord loved divorce. He hateth putting away. The Lord loved divorce. He hateth putting away. Hateth. Why your bishop don't hate it? Amen. Hey, Christian mother in the church. Hey, mother. Hey, choir director, why you don't hate it? Hate is putting away. You that speaking in tongue. You that's walking around jerking and shaking. Wait a minute. <laughs> you, and your circ you and your second wife jerking and snickling at each other. <laughs> huh? That's right. But God said. Said that he hateth putting away. Jerk that. That's right. Amen. For the Lord. The why you don't speak in tongue over that? Over that. Amen. Where are your Holy Ghost at now? Where is it? That's right. Which way with the spirit? That's right. Huh? Hey, pulpit. Why you? Why, why do I require and speaking in tongue now? Amen. What happened? You know they preach these messages that don't hurt nobody. Me shagger, shatter, and the bendy girl. They was in the front end. That's right. And the That's what it sounds like. That don't hurt you. <laughs> no, no. That don't hurt hey, you. Hey, Brother Meshach. Hey, Bishop Shadrach. Hey, Reverend Abednego. Listen to what God says. For the Lord, the God of Israel. Hey, you are pastor with a second wife. Amen. Here you are overseer with a second wife. That's right. Here you are an apostle with a second wife. Amen. Here you are elder with a second wife. For the Lord. Get out the pulpit. That's right. Get out the pulpit. Oh, hey. Get out the pulpit. Get out the pulpit. Amen. Get out the pulpit. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't care if you don't like Pastor Jennings. I ain't here to make friends at all. No. If there's any of you in the congregation, your first wife is living, and you got a second wife, and you claim you saved, you's a sinner. Mm -hmm. Jump on Pastor Jennings now. I take you for a ride while we're here in New York. That's right. You're nothing but a sinner. That's right. Because the Lord spoke here. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said. The Lord, the God of Israel, said. That he hateth putting away. No, Geno Jennings said it. The Lord, the God of Israel, said. United Pentecostal Church. P.A.W. Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. You divorce and remarry bishops as pastoring churches. Yeah. You apostolic divorce fakers. Amen. 
Shiloh Apostolic Temple, Emmanuel Apostolic Temple, Amen. Church of the Living God, Church of God in Christ. Amen. You bunch of Bible toting fakers. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said, how in the world did you folk get so religious that you can ignore a doctrine and your preachers can walk around and flaunt that second wife like a pimp flop a prostitute? Go ahead. Go ahead. And you folks sit there. Amen. amen. How you gonna say amen to a man that got two wives? And you paying him tithes yeah. and paying him offering. Go ahead. Let that la lazy devil get a job and go to work Amen. and go take care of his original house. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith. You got to be a real man to walk with this. Oh, yeah. That's why some men say, well, I'm just going to visit him. I ain't going to stay around there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You and your adulterous wife came here. That's all right. You need to come. And then you're going to get back in your adulterous car, go back to your adulterous house, get in your adulterous bed. And you know what's going to break up adultery quicker than me? Hell, of course. Oh, yes. Amen. You take a person that don't listen. You put gasoline on them and throw a match. They're going to listen at you then. Yes, they will. Because fire have a tendency of doing a quicker job than anybody can do. That's right. What did the Bible say? For the Lord, the God I of Israel I want to rain says, this scripture. I'm going to rain this scripture. Amen. I'm going to rain because there's almost as much, if not more, divorce in church than the sinners do it. That's true. There's almost more divorce in church than the sinners do it. Amen. The Bible only justifies Separation. separation. Well, Pastor Jennings, when you come to Christ, you know, we and me and my husband, we didn't know no better. So we was told that we can repent. Right. All sin you repent for. But when you repent, does that mean you're supposed to remain in it? That's right. Well, we didn't know it was wrong. You may not didn't know it was wrong that you to smoke. You may not didn't know you would get cancer. Yeah. But it don't change the fact you're going to get it. That's right. So if you didn't know that divorce was wrong and now you hear that the Bible itemizes is wrong, it don't change the fact you got a second wife, you got a second husband, you in sin. That's right. And your church you go into ain't going to help you none until you come out of it. Amen. 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 Right, listen. Mm -hmm. listen at this game, chapter and verse. Malachi chapter 2 and at verse 16. This is a big pollution. This oh, is yeah. big church pollution. Oh, yes. I mean big church pollution. Mm -hmm. That's why people go to the churches where that condone divorce. That way the husband and the second wife can sit and look at each other in church and hold hands and lie and say, we got a Christian family. We got a Christian family. We, we're Christians. We're holding hands. We're going to serve Jesus together. Hallelujah. 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 That's right. You and your wife are two sinners. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You and your wife are two sinners. That's right. You know you got a living. You know you got a living wife. You know good well that woman ain't yours. ain't yours. That woman is not yours. That's right. That's your right. wife is still living somewhere in Arizona or in New Jersey mm -hmm. or somewhere here in New York. That's why you're paying child support. That's right. Huh? That's right. You still you, you sending money to who? Your wife. Your wife. And then when your wife calls, your second wife is asking, is that is that Sharon? Mm. Yeah, that's Sharon, my wife. Even you admit it. Yeah, that's sure and my wife. Well, what she want now? Well, she complaining that the children don't have this. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and the courts got me sending her money. Who do, hey, 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 brother. Who did the courts got you sending money to, Christian? That's Your right. wife. Your wife. That's right. You mean to tell me it takes the court to tell you that, you bum? Amen. You see why they hate Pastor Jenner? Oh, yeah. Because I tell them to their New York face, they're bummed, that they don't like that. I don't like it. But I got to tell you, I'm going to tell you again this evening at 5 o'clock, so make sure you be here. Amen. What did they say? For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith. The Lord? The God of Israel, saith. A man is trifling when he can't take care of his wife and kids. Preaching. And then some church jumping and shouting and speaking in tongue and got the nerve to hold an office in church, getting to reading the Bible. Then these wow. dumb preachers ordained bums. Yeah. A man can't take care of his house. He should not even have the keys to the church. That's right. That's right. Am I right, sir? Amen. Amen. For the Lord, the God of Israel, say some grown men hate us. Oh, that man is too strict. Man up! <laughs> Bible even says, show yourself a man. That's right. 
That's right. How in the world you expect to be a man being led by these sugar daddy preachers? Yeah. Every time you do something or want to do something, they just say, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Hey, God, please be patient with me. God ain't through with me yet. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what you got to do. That's right. I'm going to tell you what you must do. You see, I'm not preaching for money. That's why I can preach like this. Preach it. Ain't nobody going to give you money for breaking up their house. No. No, no. No way. I'm not on nobody's salary, not getting paid by nobody. I'm a working man. Amen. Church ain't paying me. That's why I can preach so free like my brother back there said. I'm free. I'm free. Come back to the America. I'm free. <laughs> I'm free, brother. Oh, yes. Oh, if they go, yes, I am. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> what did the Holy Ghost say? For the Lord, the God of Israel, say. The Lord, the God of Israel, say. That he hateth putting away. Don't make no sense. These young women got two and three and four children working two and three jobs and trying to go to school and trying to send their children to school and trying to raise their children up right while some good for nothing church going bum going from church to church and just making a bunch of other babies. And some I've dealt with cases where some men so trifling, they were so determined not to take care of their kids, they were working. And they keep from the government taking money to give to the woman to take care of the kids. They quit their job so it won't be no money for them to take. My Lord. And you think I'm going to be quiet? Mm -mm. For children. No bombs can follow this message. That's right. Hey, I Go ahead. No bomb can follow this message. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Pastor Dennis, I want to be in First Church. Are you a bum? <laughs> well, you can't be here. Can't be here. Oh, uh, no, because I'm, if I break you down to the lowest common denominator. That's right. If you want to be here, you got to take care of your wife. Right. You got to take care of your children or hell going to take care of you. That's right. In the book of the <laughs> wisdom. And look at me like I said something wrong. <laughs> Even ducks take care of their young. Yes, they will. Even roaches take care of their young. Even dogs take care of their young. Amen. But that dumb, ignorant, hell-bound man that was made in God's image. Yeah. Now, do you see why God repented for making man? That's right. Have you noticed? God ain't repented for making nothing else. No. God ain't repent for making a cow. No. Every species that God may do what God made it to do. The cow give milk. He don't give soda. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That farmer go out there, he ain't pulling out Pepsi. No. He ain't doing that. No. Every time of year, the wildebeest migrate in a certain part of Africa, take the same trail. Until the alligators, the senses that God gave them, they know plenty of food coming. That's right. Certain time of year, every snake shed its skin. Yeah. They do Everything what God made it to do. Now here come man. What in the world happened to man? Man want to switch. Man want to arch his eyebrows. That's right. Man want to wear lipstick. Man want to put on dresses. Man want to carry pocketbooks. Man so messed up, he don't want the anatomy God gave him, so he want to go to the doctor and get rid of it. Yeah. He don't want to have a womb like a woman. Like a woman. Man want to wear high heels. Yeah. Man want to wear dresses. Man want to wear fake long hair. That's right. Man want to kiss men. Men want to hug men. Men want to marry men. Man. What's wrong with you? How did you get so messed up? Amen. How much more abominable and filthy is man? Do you hear this? In, in the book of Job, chapter 15 and verse 16. Job, the 15th chapter. And verse Job, 16. Job, the 15th chapter. And begin at verse 16. How much more abominable? How much more abominable? And filthy. And they get on me by calling names. Amen. How much more abominable? And filthy. And filthy. Is man. Which drinketh iniquity like water. He just he does. Oh, yeah. He loved. Love it. Man drink it like what? Like water. What's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with being a man today? That's right. You men want to wear ponytails? That's right. When I came up, you would never see a man with bangs. No. Bangs, a man? A man. 
They got what is called now man wearing a man bun. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Why? What's wrong with you? Why in the world you and your wife sharing two mirrors, you get her rubber bands and bobby pins to do your hair? Yeah. A man? Do it not even nature itself teach you? Get, listen at this. Now in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and at verse 14. Do it not nature itself teach you? That if a man have long hair. What is it? It is a shame unto him. I remember I preached that and the Hebrew Israelite got upset and sent me the scripture from the book of Judges about Samson. Mm. Samson had long hair. Well, he was under a vow and that vow wasn't all his life. It was a temporary Nazarite. Right. Uh, if you look at the law of the Nazarite, the law of the Nazarite, you're separated for a period of time. Right. Not only could your hair grow long, but certain things you couldn't eat. Couldn't eat. Well, in the New Testament, Jesus, who is God manifest in the flesh, he established a new law. That's right. And he come along and says in the book of uh, uh, Corinthians that it's a shame. For it is a shame. It is a shame. Do it not even nature. For a man, man that if a that man have long hair. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. There ain't no, listen, when I look at a man, I should not mistake him for a woman. No. What a man doing like this for? Amen. You talking to me, you got to keep whipping your hair around. Wow. That's right. You can see them all on TBN. That's right. And BET. Long hair, ponytail head, Christians. Amen. Amen. And you brainwashed people who think you Christians gotten so ignorant. What's wrong with it, Pastor Jennings? Mm. What's wrong with it? What's the matter with you? It was not even nature. How can teaching? you accept all this trash? Yeah. The Bible says. It was not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long if hair. If a man have long hair. It is a shame unto him. Why are you in a shame? Shame. Why are you in a shame, brother? You're using your wife rollers. That's right. Shame. Yeah. Amen. What happened to our men? What happened? Holy men don't have long hair. No. Go ahead, brother. Huh? Do it not even nature itself teach you. Holy men don't have long hair. That's right. I don't care if you do call yourself a Hebrew Israelite. I don't care. <laughs> this apostle here who was Paul was a Hebrew of the Hebrews and he came from the tribe of Benjamin. That's right. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. Says what? Doeth not even nature itself teach. And Paul was preaching under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Doeth not nature itself teach. That if a man have long hair. They got this thing now in the barbershop as a sponge right. with little holes in it. And they put it on fellas hair and the hair come out looking like buckwheat. That's right. You ain't holy list, you ain't walk around with that trifling with looking that. foolishness. Amen. Amen. If you are barber in holiness, you don't do that to nobody else's hair. No. You represent what God stands for. That's right. That's not right. only in conduct, but in look. That's right. Do it not even nature itself teach you. What I look like arching my eyebrows and stand up in the pulpit with eyebrow pencil. Next mm. time I come here, eyebrow pencil, ponytail, earring in my ear, got on bright, bright, bright yellow pants and whatnot, and pants hanging down, telling you, hello everybody. Hello everybody. I got a revelation. Uh, Jesus is coming soon, might be morning, night, or noon. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Are oh, you getting what I'm telling? Go ahead. People have been living in trash so long they call trash right. Oh, yeah. When I come along with a clean message, they call clean wrong. Clean wrong. The devil have made them so backward. That's right. If after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, Peter said they are entangled therein and have overcome. Their latter end shall be worse with them For, than the beginning. Give chapter and verse again. Now in 2 Peter chapter 2 and we're at verse 21. The Bible said it is better. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Uh-oh. When you learn this way, then you turn your back on it. The Lord says, better you never knew it. Mm -hmm. Then, after the they Lord have said it, it's better you never knew it. Never knew it. Because now that you know it, you're going to be held accountable. That's right. That's right. Anytime you learn the way of God, and then you turn on it, reject it, despise it, 
fight against it, the Lord says it's better. You never knew it. For it, for it had been better it for them. It had been better for them. Not to have known the way of righteousness. Not to have known the right way. Then after they have known then it. Then after you have known it. To turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. What did God call of those that turn from it? But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. What did God call them? The dog is turned to his own vomit again. When you leave this message, what did God call you? The dog is turned to his own vomit again. To his own vomit. Own he vomit. go right back and eat up the filth that he, he was preached out of. And the sow. And the sow. That was washed. Wash. To her wallowing in the mire. God call you a pig and a dog. That's right. Turn. Turn. And they get on me by calling names. Amen. God call you a pig and a dog. That's right. That's right. Go back to the book of Jasher. Everybody all right? Amen. I want to clean you up, New York. Come out of your churches. Come out. Come out of your churches. Get ready to repent today. today. When you repent, you're sorry about your wrong. And you ask God to forgive you for your wrong. Right. And when you truly repent, I don't have to fight with you to get you in water. Yeah. I don't have to fight with you. My God, you'll do like the eunuch uh, Acts told to Philip. Here is water. What hindered me from being baptized? That's right. All right. Back in Joshua chapter 22 and verse 48. Uh -huh. And the Lord said to Satan. What is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? Yes. And Satan answered the Lord and said, I have seen. I have seen. All the children of the earth who serve thee. And. And remember thee when they require anything from thee. Yes. And when thou givest them the thing you which they require from thee. give them what they want. They sit at their ease. They get ease. They get lazy. And like you haven't done nothing. That's right. Have you ever met people you helped and stood by for so many years? And they treat you like you ain't did a thing for them. That's right. I mean, literally, like you haven't done nothing. They have no respect for you. They have no regard for you. They talk about you like a dog and you did nothing to them but help them. That's right. That's the way many are doing God right now. Yeah. You know why you live? Not because you're so cute or got so much money. You eat and live and walk and talk and able to move around and have your being by God's permission. That's right. That's it. Huh? That's right. You that are watching, it ain't nothing so good about none of you. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't like you either. <laughs> I love all of you. Amen. I don't like nobody. I don't like nobody. <laughs> I love everybody. I don't like you, Williams. Amen. I say I don't like you. That's what you said. I love everybody. That's right. <laughs> Here is God now. Look at the way you treat him. He and when, told you he's one, and you lied on him and said it's three. Hmm. He told you he's one. He even told you there's no God with him. And you lied and said there's a little God with the big God, you liar. That's right. Oh, how wicked and ungodly you are. Amen. What is that? And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee. When you give the people what they want, Lord. They sit at their ease. They sit back like you ain't done nothing. And forsake thee. Wait a minute. Not only... Do they have what you gave them? They leave you. They desert you. Amen. They backslide. Right. They turn their back on you. Mm -hmm. Even one prophet said they turn unto me the back and not the face. The face. Right. How did people get so arrogant and self-righteous? There are some of these rappers out there who used to be in some church. Yeah. Right. And now when they rap, they cuss they God. They call God MF. Yes, they do. Say there is no God. Say God can't do nothing for me. Yeah. When you stand before your Lord, you bear in mind, rich people. You only got the breath in your nostrils. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care if you build a bridge from your living room to your bathroom. And every morning, you got to walk across that bridge over a lake full of swine and rose petals. <laughs> but you still going to have to meet your Lord. Thank God. Nobody. And I'm glad God have it like this. Yeah. One rapper said, church can't do nothing for me. Another rapper said, God ain't never did nothing for me. Lord, You'll find out. Yes, you will. I want all of you in your club shaking your little dust. Your dust going to be planted in the grave. That's right. And my God, when that great God of heaven, who you claim never do nothing for you, I want you to know God's going to do something for you. Oh, yeah. Give me Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. 32. 32. 39. 39. Begin at verse 38. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy 32, 38. I'm starting at verse 38. Listen. Which did eat the, 
of their sacrifice. Read it again. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifice. Yes. And drank the wine of their drink offerings. What else? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. And see now that I God talking. See now that I am I am He. Am He. And there is no God with me. What? I kill. Wait a minute. The one God. Hey, hey, club, club dancer. You out there partying, shaking, disgracing yourself with your hot pants on and your backside hanging out of your pants. Even a dog drop its tail to hide its private parts. That's right. You're somebody's mother dancing like this. You're somebody's grandmother. You out like this. You're somebody's wife out like this. You're somebody's daughter out like this. Why you don't snuggle wrong with it looking like a neighborhood whore? Yes, I said it, oh, yeah. and I say it again. Why you out there half naked looking like a regular neighborhood right. hoe? That's right. That's right. Who are you calling a whore? You. That's right. Look at you. Look at you. That's right. You out there advertising your butt, advertising your breasts. Amen. You don't look like a Christian. No. You look like a whore. You look like Jezebel. That's right. That's why men get mad at me when I preach this. You know why? I had a man tell me. He said, I hope no woman listen to you. He said, don't you know when I go to church, I look forward to seeing those thighs and look forward to seeing those breasts. I had a sinner tell me this. He said, Pastor Jennings, I hope no woman out here listen to you. He said, when I go to church, I look forward to see a congregation full of breast sisters mm. and thighs and hips. He said, I go to church looking for that. He said, when I go to your church, I got to listen to you because everybody covered like a blanket. That's right. What kind of man is that? You don't mind your wife out here with a hot pants? Hot pants. And men bumping horns at her. And yeah, you want to fight the man. No, go fight yourself. Run home and just start punching yourself in the face. You, and just say, you stupid thing. Why you let her come out like that? You stupid thing. That's right. You want to cuss the man out? Cuss yourself out. Yeah. That's your meat. Amen. That's your turkey. That's right. Why don't you try dressing your turkey? Amen. Amen. Huh? That's right. That's your turkey. That's your Thanksgiving. Try dressing your Thanksgiving up. Amen. Stop letting your wife coming out here looking like a neighborhood hood rat. Hood rat. Huh. Hot pants and you out here half naked yeah. with a halter on, breast hanging out, and just walking the street. Yeah. Man, bump his hand. Bam, bam, you turn around. That's right. You somebody's mama. That's right. You somebody's daughter. Amen. You and your mama out here like that. Yeah. And you got a father that let this trash go to his house? That's right. What type of father is you? That's right. You let drinking go on in your house. You let cigarette sucking go on in your house. You let partying and cussing go on in your house. You let your 15 year old daughter, 20 year old boyfriend spend the night in your house and turn it to a hotel. That's right. And you ain't got no spine. That's right. To stand up like a man mm -hmm. and rule your house. Your house. Amen. Talk back to me. Amen. Go ahead. You see why they say Pastor Jen is mean? <laughs> No, you rather watch T.D. Jakes. <laughs> Am I right? That's right. Walk around with a blowfish message. A blowfish gospel. Amen. Glory to God, I take the needle of the scriptures and punch a hole in that hole stuff in and blow it all out. That's right. That's right. No church, no neighborhood, no community will get right until your homes get right. Amen. Until your homes get right. Amen. You can have all the marches in America and demonstrate all you want. It ain't worth nothing and you ain't working on your house. That's right. That's right. 
That's right. Get your house straight. Stop your children from cussing with their foul mouth. Yeah. You fathers, stop being scared of your sons. That's right. You mothers, stop knocking up your daughter's boyfriend. Amen. Get your house in order. Get your house in order. Because the churches ain't preaching nothing. The churches don't preach nothing. The churches, listen viewers and you that are here, the churches today, they ain't got nothing to offer you but damnation. That's right. And destruction. The church will ruin your house. Yeah. They let all them second, third wives, and third and fourth husbands. I had up some people call me from Augusta, Georgia. Near, no, near Macon, Georgia. Left the United Pentecostal Church. Others have called me, left the UPCI. And she was telling me how she went to the preacher and told her her situation. The preacher right off the back said, oh, go on and divorce that man. Get another one. They talk about this stuff like you're trading cars in. That's right. That's right. Just, call, just calmly, oh, divorce, get another one. That's what these preachers tell you. Hey, get another one. I remember I knew a preacher in Texas. I don't even know where he's still living. He said, if you marry a woman, you find out she was not a virgin, you can get rid of her and marry again. So I wanted to see how often would he, you know, how, how far he would take this. I said, suppose you find out the second one on the virgin. He said, well, get the third. I said, suppose you find out the third on the virgin. He said, well, get the fourth. He said, listen, you can keep trying until you stumble up on a virgin. If that was so, what man would marry? That's right. That man, he get tired of that woman and said, you see, you ain't no virgin no way. Bye. There's so much rot and no good right. teaching around here. That's why I have to hit hard. I have to expose the folly That's that right. is in the world. I have to do it. And anybody get offended or don't like it, it don't matter to me at all. I'm going to do the will of him that sent me. Amen. And God sent me to do this right. I'm determined to do it right. I'm determined to do it right. Right. Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm determined, I said. Go ahead, brother. I ain't God, I'm not swerving to the left or to the right. I'm not distracted. I'm focused on what God said. Yeah. I got, I, I'm focused on what God said. That's right. You can offer me anything you want. Mm. You know, Balak offered Balaam and position yeah. and offer him money if he would just cuss Israel. Yeah. And every time Balak, Balak would take Balaam to a different place, Balak was under the impression that if he take Balaam to different locations, it'd change your perspective. Yeah. But every time that Balak took Balaam somewhere, the message didn't change. That's right. Amen. Balaam said, I, Balaam, the son of Beor, fell into a trance, having my eyes open, saw the vision of the Almighty, had the understanding of the Most High. Behold, I shall see him, but not now. I shall look upon him, but not nigh. But a star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. Every time that Balak wanted Balaam to change, and Balaam answered, listen at this in the book of Numbers, chapter 22, and verse 18. Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, What if Balak would give me his house? This is the spirit that God put in me. If Balak would give me his house, this is that same spirit that God put in me. If Balak would give me his house, if you people that are watching will give me billions and billions of dollars. Full of silver and, and gold. And you give me silver and gold. I cannot. I cannot. Go beyond the go word beyond of the Lord my God's God. word. To do more. To do more. Or less. I, you can offer me anything under the sun. I am not going to get away from that Bible. That's right. To tell you more. Or less. In I other can. words, I'm not a sellout. I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord I'm my stay God. stay right there. That's right. I'ma stay right there. To do less or more. Amen. I had a man write me one time and said, Pastor Jennings, what would you do if I gave you ten million dollars? I said, first I thank God, then I would thank you, then I pay off all balanced mortgages on the churches, then I buy new churches and buy more programs, and start some more church businesses so more income can come into the church and continue to preach the gospel and tell you if you don't get it right, you'll go to hell after you give me the ten million dollars. <laughs> Amen. He said, you mean to tell me you will still tell me I'm going to hell after I donate 10 million? I said, your 10 million don't buy me. No. 
I said, I, I preach to you if, like if you gave me $10 That's or true. 10 cents. That's right. Or it takes God, either God made you like this or he did or not. He did Brother, not. it takes God to make a preacher. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, it takes yeah. God. is no maybe so about it. Oh, yes. It takes the God of heaven to make you a preacher when God make you. He put a spirit in you. Thank God and commission you to Preach the, the gospel. gospel. Glory to God to every creature. Right. Go back to the book of Joshua and finish up so I can knock off. Real quick. Back in Joshua 22 and verse 48. All right. And the Lord said to Satan, what is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? Remember, God is asking the devil a question here about the people of the earth. And Satan answered the Lord. And, and the said, devil answered the Lord. And said, I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee. I have seen all the children of the earth that give you service. And remember thee when they require anything. And they remember you when they want something. And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee. Then what? They sit at their ease and forsake thee. Yes. And they remember thee no more. Amen. Brothers and sisters. Yes. You don't want to turn from this message. No. This is the message for the last days. That's right. All of you that are here, you that are watching, leave your churches, pack up and leave. This is a warning to you. I'm sent to warn you. I'm not sent to pacify you. I'm not sent. I didn't come to New York to be your friend. I come to tell you what's right and lead you out of bondage. That's right. With God everlasting word. Every religion under the sun, God did not start. God only had one way. And God told you to be one thing. He said, behold it. Everybody under the sun now must get ready to get right on God terms. God Almighty move on the Apostle Peter in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. For God said that the gospel must be preached to all the world as a witness against them. Then shall the end come. And he, after Jesus died and rose the third day, he said that repentance and remission of sins shall be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And he told his apostles, ye are my witnesses. When the Apostle Paul went among Athens, among Greece, among the Epicureans and the Stoics, he said, as I passed by, beheld your devotions, I saw an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Him whom ye eagerly wish of, him I declare unto you. And the apostle Paul said, in the time of this ignorance, God winked at, but now God command all men everywhere to repent. The apostles went on down to Jerusalem, and the apostle Peter stood up with the eleven, and declared by the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven, he said, Re repent, 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 Every, yeah, 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 everybody that's here, you got to get sorry about being a sinner. That's right. When I was coming up and I'd done wrong, when the moment I saw my father, I was convicted. Yeah. I didn't even have to see the belt. When I saw my father, I knew there was something around his waist, around his waist, yeah. and I knew it was coming. That's right. And the moment he reached for it, I was like, <laughs> you know, you know, crying don't move too many fathers. <clears throat> kind of work on your mama sometimes. That's right. You start crying, you know, then you get extra, you hypocrite extra. <laughs> That's right. Mama be like, all right, all right, all right, all right. I ain't gonna beat you this time. That's with some mothers. Some mothers. Some mothers you start that. Uh -huh. Shut up! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, God. Some man. Some mother when she slap you, the tears, the tears go back up. You stop. That's right. Everything worked in reverse. <laughs> well, here come God. Here come God. God Almighty, you that are here, you that are watching around the world, the truth of God is over the air for you. God put it over the air for you. It ain't nobody that ran up on this message by mistake. No. Nobody. No. My God, when you found this thing, it was like finding a life raft while you was out there in the water of sin. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It was not a mistake. Think of it. What, what was it about you that God showed so much mercy? That bring you his word? Nothing about none of us. Oh, no. The Bible says God knows them that are his. That's right. And because it isn't the will of God that anybody go to hell, that's not his will. That's not his will. And to keep man out of hell, he put a message in the earth. That's right. A message that is designed to debunk every lie that man have brought from a pulpit. That's right. And God commanded for everybody to repent. Repent and be baptized. He wants you sorry about your wrong. You know, you get a person that's sorry, they're going to try to make a change. Yeah. As you repent of your sins, you got to do what? And be baptized. How? Every one of you. How many in New York? Every one of you. How many in Washington? Every one of you. You that are watching, you may as well flood your emails in. Flood them in. Yeah. Flood them in for baptism. Flood them in. That's right. Give your name and your address, phone number, email, everything. Flood it in. That's right. 
What did he say? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. And like I said, you don't need to get baptized and then you're going to go back out to your false church. Yeah. You're still lost. Yeah. You got to walk with the message now. That's right. Huh? Repent. Repent. And be baptized. Every one of you now, in the name of Jesus Christ God, for the remission of sin. God said to get your sins removed then. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy when Ghost. When you have the Holy Ghost, you have the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you're filled with God. The Bible said God is a spirit. That's right. What kind of spirit is God? He's the Holy Spirit. Holy spirit. There's none greater than him, better than him, higher than him, or equal to him. All right, anybody that's here that want to get right. And want to be baptized the right way and follow the way of holiness in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand on your feet. If you want to be right, stand on your feet. Glory to God. All of you that are standing, go to the back where you see them are. You that are standing, go to the back. All of you that are standing, go to the back. Amen. You, you, yeah, if there's anybody else. You're not born again unless you got this right. That's right. Come on, brother, let's get them together. You're not born again unless you got this right. That's right. Brother Bobby, you go with Minister Harrison, just in case you need a hand. You're not born again at all. No. I don't care because you bow your head and raise your hand. Ain't no Bible tell you to do that. No. What you doing that for? The Bible ain't tell you pray no sinner's prayer. No. The Bible didn't tell you go join the church. The Bible ain't tell you do none of that. The Bible speak plain. Then Peter said unto the them, The Bible ain't repent. tell you go to no church or hold some sinners, some preacher's hand and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart, wash me. Let that devil hand alone. Yeah. This is what you got to do. Repent. You've been out there sinning all these years. Why is it you got to debate whether to get yourself right? That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, I know you're telling the truth, but I... But what? What? Why you got to think and fumble around about getting on God's side, but you ain't got to think about lying and partying and swearing and acting like a fool. Mm -hmm. Repent! Repent and be baptized. Look at how God works. Every one of you. Like I said, viewers, last week we were in Brooklyn. 45 went down in the name of Jesus Christ. This week we're in Bronx, New York. Last night, 30 went down. Amen. And I don't know how many is out there now. Right. Amen. But we're still fishing. That's right. He told the apostles, I'll make you fishes of men. That's we're right. We're still fishing. Amen. Amen. All right. You come on back tonight. We're going to fish some more tonight. Mm -hmm. Come on back tonight. Service begin at 5 o'clock. We're going to let you go. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. And we'll close you out with prayer. God be our helper. All right. Under him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory. With exceeding George, the only wise God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory and power both now and forever. Brothers and sisters, say amen. amen. Come on back at 5 o'clock.